Guys, I finally did it. I finally found the love of my life. But before I introduce you to that person, But before we get into that, it's been so damn long since I actually sat down and talked straight to you guys. No cheesy sad boy voiceover with really okay average videos. It's me sitting down talking straight to you. And if you haven't watched all my other videos, I've been through quite the journey. So if you don't know who I am yet, my name is Peter. What's up? From Broke the Habit, aka BTH Peter. And I've been healing from one of my most toxic, emotionally abusive relationships for the past almost two years now, where I gave it everything I had. And it's so interesting to have the same person that you love so much cause you so much pain. And all my videos before, I was able to actually document my entire process of that healing journey. And to be honestly frank with you guys, I'm still healing from that. All right, man. It's been such a journey when it comes to like vlogging. And people are like, Peter, you got your heart broken. And it's been a tough year. And honestly, the videos I've been making, I have not been myself. I've got my heart ripped into shreds and the hell wait hold up Whew. in all my relationships i always felt like i was not good enough i felt like i was in a relationship i was always chasing someone i was always being like hey you should pick me right i'm good i'm a catch and i was talking to my friend the other day and they're like yeah i should actually think that i'm a catch and she was like yeah peter you are a catch why don't you think that and a lot of it comes back to my childhood. So I needed to ask myself, what was it in my childhood that I felt like I was not good enough? I heard you got heartbroken. Oh, it's just Tommy. What's up, bro? What's going on? At Hail Mail Productions. Hail Mail Productions. But uh, yeah, man. What you doing? Just got my heart broken. Again? Yeah, man. It's been like <laughs> two years. Just, just trying to figure this thing out. It's, it's like, like it's if serious. anybody can say it, but to actually do it, yeah. it, it is like, it, if you don't give a shit about them, you don't care about them, then you're moving on, you know the relationship has gone to shit or whatever, yeah. it's easy. But if you actually care about them and you have feelings for them and you were in a good relationship and you kind of want to get back to them or whatever it is, or you want to work things out, there's a good chance you're going to be like, hey, what are they up to? Who are they seeing? Are they seeing somebody else? Am I wasting my time? Wasted time to get to this. Yeah. Right? Then the real way or the, the better way, I think, was to really just focus on yourself. It's not only like going to the gym, lose, you know, eating healthier or maybe drinking less, partying less yeah. or whatever. It's, you know, it could be going back to school, learning. A, I didn't go back to school until I was like 25. Yeah. Right. Uh, learning a skill right or chasing your passion doing what really really makes you happy by yourself so growing up in an asian household you never hear that hey good job hey i love you hey how great are you as a human being so growing up my entire childhood i always felt like i had to prove myself i had to be something i just couldn't be the person that i am at this exact moment and fast track, it's something that I'm still having trouble being a part of is self-love and understanding my own worth, regardless of another person or human being's opinion. And a tangent to this is that my whole point of creating videos was to prove people wrong. But the reality is, the more I try to prove people wrong, deep down, I still cared what they thought. After all these damn years, I'm still try to figure out how to do this damn vlogging thing and when people are always like try not to care it's a different story when you're in front of the camera it's a lot easier 
when you're behind it. And the whole truth about this whole content thing is like, man, not everyone has it. Like, there's days where I don't even press record, man. At all. Skip and skip out my problems. So to understand how I actually found the love of my life is that I need to ask myself the hard questions of actually being alone. And the reality was, is that a lot of my relationships, I'm not going to spill the tea, is that I actually was never alone. I always chased relationships. Since I was 15 years old, 14, 13, I was always in a relationship, whether that was a month, a year, two years. And because of the pandemic, that was the first time in my life where I felt like I was alone. And it's a scary place to be when you hold up a mirror to your face and you have to ask yourself the most difficult questions. Do you want to explain them how we met? Do you want to answer this question? Okay, I'll, I'll start with like my perspective. Okay. Okay, so from what I remember was like mm -hmm. going through really bad breakup. And then on the Canadian side, that's when the world kind of like shut down. And then I got mm. really sad and lonely. And I'm like, why not download something called Tinder? But I'm like, I was planning to go to Vietnam come like next year. So I'm like, okay, let, let, let's just put, because the thing with the app is like, you can go and change your location wherever. And I put it to uh, Saigon. And then we matched. And then the funny thing about the the thing was I put my YouTube, I'm like, why not use this as a marketing thing? And then I put my blur, <laughs> my YouTube channel in the thing. And then we matched. From there, we talked a lot, right? Like <laughs> yeah. almost every other day, or right? I think we talk every every weekend. I think it was a year. lot. It was a lot. A couple, like, couple of months, yeah. You feel so alone, but then sometimes I'm super dramatic. I'm like, what if I look into the ocean and I'm, I'm staring into the, the, the dark and I'm like, I wonder if someone's going through the exact same thing. And I felt like that was with you. <laughs> Where it's like someone across, half halfway across the world, I don't know who they are. And it's like, yeah. we, we happen to go or like have the same type of things. Cause like, I don't know if you want to like spill too much of your tea but you were also getting out of a thing. And then I realized the actual, real, real love of my life wasn't in Vietnam, wasn't going somewhere to find myself. It was who I am right now, Peter, some little kid out of Vancouver, Canada, who had dreams of talking to the internet and doing things for fun. And I always wanted to make videos. And the moment I stopped making these videos, didn't matter how much views it got. I just got more and more depressed because I stopped doing the things that made me happy. And I realized that the love of my life, if you haven't figured out by now, was me. Well, well I'm not the love of your life, but it's like you have to be the love of your life. And that was a hard thing to realize is that no matter how hot the girls I went on dates with, no matter whatever etiquette or Bible that they have to play or get rejected, I needed to love myself. I needed to be there for me. I needed to be my own best friend. And until you actually realize that, and if you grew up in a broken Asian household like I did, you don't really learn how to process things. You learn to hold crap load of resentment you don't learn coping mechanisms you don't learn what's it like to have a meltdown and still be okay and still be loved for who you are growing up in an asian household is always conditional love meaning i only like you or care about you or love you if you do x or y it's never i love you period even if it's your mistakes your failures you're still I still care about you regardless. And that's something that I needed to give to myself. I needed to be the parent that I didn't have growing up. Just learning how to be me, right? And that is 
one of the hardest things you got to realize as a human. And I'm still learning how to love myself. I'm still learning what's it like to be alone. And if you haven't noticed yet, you know, I'm on my own now. And that's going to be the next video. I'm going to tell you guys exactly how much I pay, how much I you need to make in this damn city to stay alive. And what's it like actually living alone in Vancouver? I wanted to sit down with you guys and talk to you and be like, I'm still alive. The videos are coming and I'm still here trying to figure out whatever it is that I'm trying to figure out, but on my terms, right? Not on nobody else's terms and really enjoy the things that I like and I have fun with. And it's been so damn long and I think it's finally time to be like, Peter, you are a great human being, charismatic, really awkward and funny, and really talented. And I'm glad that you finally found who you wanted to be. And you've had a really, really tough past two years. And you deserve the love that you are working for. You deserve everything in the world. And it didn't matter how many girls told you that you're a great human being, but it's true, right? And you need to believe them. You can't be like, oh, that's just their way of rejecting you. But you're soon to realize that how you are in your love life and how you're in your childhood is going to bleed out everywhere into other aspects of who you are as a human being and until you ask yourself the question that you need to then you're always going to be running away from yourself <laughs>